Well, welcome to another three-point edit tutorial. This time it's making particle clouds with Blender. I'm using Blender 2.8 because of its EV render engine. The first thing I'm going to do, of course, is delete the default cube. X, to, X key to delete. Let's add some elements and name them in our scene. The first thing I would like is to add a plane and Alt-G, Alt-R to make sure it's at the center of the scene. Let's press 7 and look from the top down. Now I'd like to split the screen so that I have a shader window underneath. Click here and click on Shader Editor. Let's name our plane. This will be called the Particle Element. Let's add a new material. I'm going to get rid of the principal BSDF because it's quite large for this tutorial. It works perfectly fine, but I don't need it to demonstrate this effect. Let's put a regular diffuse in here and we'll build a simple transparency mix. Now you'll notice that I can't see through this item even though it has transparency built in there. I should be able to see see through the object, but I can't. Over here in the object properties I need to scroll down and find the material slot, choose material, and then look at its settings, and instead of opaque, or black in this case, we want alpha blend. Or if we were doing a fire effect, we would use additive. Let's choose alpha blend. And now we can see through it. If I go to the sh mix shader and sl push the slider back the other way, it becomes opaque. So what we're going to do is change this factor. Let's add some nodes. We want a texture node, and in this case I want a gradient. Take the factor out of the gradient, and you can see that it's a linear gradient from left to right. I want it to be a quadratic sphere, but you can't see the sphere. That's because we need to feed coordinates into our plane. Let's add some other elements. We want texture coordinate. And in this case, we're using generated in case we want to change the shape of our plane. And it's still doing nothing. Let's add a mapping node to modify the coordinates. Let's put it in texture mode and change this to 0.5 offset and the other three axes to 0.5. Now you can see the spherical gradient is appearing. I'd also like to change its size so let's change these to 3 to make it a different size and we're going to add a ramp. I'm going to invert the colors actually so that it's transparent around the outside. Now you can see the sphere appearing. I say it's a sphere because if you move its location up and down off the plane it disappears. Imagine a cross section through an apple. That's what we do when we move the texture up and down through the plane. Let's put it back to 0.5. I'm actually using this principle to change the nature of the um, sphere later on in the tutorial. Let's add some other elements. I want to distort this sphere now, so I'll need another mapping node. This time set to point. I'm going to plug the generated surface into the mapping node and I'm going to modify the mapping node so that it's 0, 0, 0 location but in the scale I'm actually going to edit one of these later to modify the distortion. Let's add a distortion texture a Veroni or Veroni texture. I want to use intensity and I want to use distance and I want to use closest pretty much out of the box and I'm changing this vector scale to 6.5. In order to modify the shape of our sphere, 
I need to modify the vector input to the sphere. We do this by adding this output of a vector with this Veroni texture. And we can do that by mixing them as colors. Go to the color nodes and look for mix RGB. Now if I simply plug in the color, you get this random assortment of bubbles. That's not quite what I want. What I want to do is modify the actual circle. So let's go down here and look for dodge as a mix type. And now the circle is staying intact and its outline is being modified by the Veroni texture. If we change the scale, you can see that it becomes more blobby or less blobby. And for my clouds, I'm choosing 6.5. For the amount, you can change the amount of distortion here. I'll leave it around 0.3. And if you want to make this uh, more or less opaque, you can modify the color ramp. and tighten it up like so. More contrast, less contrast. So there's the first element of our cloud. The next thing we want to do is orient this plane towards our camera so that no matter where our camera is in the scene, the plane always looks at it. This will make it look like a sphere from every angle. So let's attach a constraint to our plane. We're going to track to, track to our camera. We want Y to be up and it's inverted so we need to select negative Z. Now no matter where I move the camera the plane will point at the camera. If we look through the camera here you can see no matter where we go it always points towards us. Now we can use this plane as a particle. Let's add a cube back into our scene. Alt G to center it. And let's apply a particle effect. Click on the particle button. Let's go into wireframe mode. So I've just typed Z and click on wireframe so we can see what happens. I don't need a thousand particles here. What I need is to fill up the volume maybe use the modifier stack in case I need to use it later. I'm going to use a grid and instead of 10 objects, instead of dividing the grid into 10 pieces, I'm going to divide it into three and I'm going to give it a full random sort. But we can't see anything. Where are all our particles? That's because they haven't existed yet. We're on frame one and they take up until frame 200 to appear. Well, they don't want that. Let's start them all at frame one. So they start and end at frame one, and I'll give them a life of the entire duration of the animation, which in this case is 250 frames. Let's hit play. Oh, and they fall out of the scene. Well, I don't want that. Let's make them stay in the volume. If we go down to field weights, click on gravity, type zero. Now, when we go back to the start, press play, they remain in place. If I move the volume around, you can see they remain attached. You notice that if I modify the randomness, they spread out from one another. But they also don't have a very good size. Let's go down to the Render tab. Let's make this an object. And what object? Well, of course, we want it to be our particle element. We want the object's rotation so that they're all pointing the right way but you can barely see them. They're tiny little orange squares. Let's make their size larger. You can see they're quite a bit larger now. If we go into look dev mode, oh well I can see the texture but unfortunately it's hiding inside this object. At the moment the show emitter does not seem to do anything. So let's change the object's viewport display to bounds. And now we can see inside the box. If we press 0 to look from the camera and we move the camera 
let's press N for our viewport properties and tick lock camera to view so that when we move the camera by holding down Alt and scroll you can see through the camera port that the particles are all following us. If I split this view by grabbing a corner and splitting it across tab 0 to get out of that view and we look from a different angle press N to get rid of that you'll be able to see what's happening. No matter where I move the particles follow so they look like spheres from every angle. You'll notice that all the particles are not random and that the same three little blobs appear at the top of every one so I'd like them to be more random. Let's fix that by editing the material. Let's go back to shader view. Let's go back to the shader editor. Select our particle element and edit our cloud material. I'm going to add a driver to the Z value in the mapping node for the Veroni texture. Remember the Veroni is the distortion. If I click and drag this slider with the shift key you can see that the surface changes. Now what if there was a way that we could drive this value from the camera? Well we can certainly do that by right mouse clicking and pressing add driver and now we get this expression. These expressions are no, not much good right now because they're not defined as anything. Let's first of all add the particle element as our source location. Let's rename var to emit var and copy that. Let's put that up here in the expression. Paste. And let's add another input variable doesn't like it, comes up all red. Let's change it to a transform channel and this time we're going to select the camera because at least we know the camera will probably move in frame. And whatever distance the particle is from the camera will give it a different value at the particle level for the texture. So let's change this to camera bar Control c to copy that. Up here we're going to add or plus camera var and enter. Oops, I seem to have had an extra one there. Now if we click off, notice that when I move the camera around the texture updates very very rapidly. I don't really want that. Let's change this value so let's edit the driver Let's stick this in brackets so that they're added together first and then we'll t divide the total value by 20 just to slow that move that value change down. We'll update the dependency. Now when I scroll you can see that they're changing much more gradually around the outside so it looks like we're painting around a real cloud with different blobs on each side. Now if we want that to look like it's evolving over time we could also add another value. Let's go back to edit drivers and put in more parentheses so the beginning and the end so that that becomes a separate function and then we add brackets, a frame value, which is a preset variable in Python for drivers, and we'll divide the current frame by 80, close brackets. Now when I press play, there's a boiling cloud on top of a changing cloud when I dolly around. Now depending on whether you want boiling a boiling effect, uh, for clouds maybe evolving over time or whether you want to use this as a particle tree then you would remove the frame variable from the driver. I'm going to leave it on now.
because it looks kind of cool. If I go into shaded view and turn off overlays, there is some lighting in the scene. You can see that this light has some effect on our scene. This, if I drag this lamp through the clouds, you can see that the clouds, the particles of the clouds get individually shaded by the lamp. Which is quite useful. It makes for a very convincing volumetric effect. Certainly, if the material was softer in transparency, let's just select the particles, change the amount of transparency, make it more fluffy with our dodge value, so you can see that it's very, very fine around the edges. Now when I move the light through there, it falls off more gently. If I duplicate this light and change its color and make a custom distance, you can get a very, very um, easy to art direct effect good for lightning or alien lasers and what have you. And here are some other examples of what you can achieve with this technique. Using as many or as few particles as you like, you can interact with them very effectively using lighting in your scene.